Yo, what's up, man? This is Bullethead. And uh, real quick, I'm going to go over the uh, new app I just bought. It's the uh, Mini Mode Model D app from Moog from the iOS store. It's uh, on sale right now for $4.99. It's an introductory price. And man, I'm telling you, I was blown away. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. I mean, the sounds are really, really, really nice. Super clean, super fat, just super dope sound all together. Uh, but anyway, real quick, uh, my platform that I normally use to make my tracks is the MPC software. Um, I'm using 2.1. So I'm going to go over real quick how to run it in 2.1, as well as go over a few features in the app itself and just show you how it sounds, man. And uh, just let you know, like, right up front, man, you got to get it. But all right, let's get started. All right, first things first, man. Let's check out this app. As you can see, the interface is super, super clean, man. Um, it's licensed by Moog itself. I mean, so you know they didn't have stuff. All the parameters and the knobs to control all your different sounds or and effects and actually, you know, create different sounds because every sound that came with it, which I think it's about 160 to begin with, was created right here on the app. And like I say, man, when I first heard it, I mean, I was attracted to it because it was, you know, licensed by Moog, and then it was 4.99, so it was basically a no-brainer. But when I heard the sounds, I was totally, totally blown away, and instantly, instantly, I just, you know, decided I need to go ahead and and start working on a few tracks and utilize some of the dopeness. But uh, like I say, I, if you look at the GUI, man, everything is there. I mean, you got your controller section, the oscillator bank, oscillator one through three. You got your mixer section, uh, your modifiers. Uh, your frequency cutoff, uh, frequency emphasis, uh, decay time, all that stuff, man. You got it all. Pitch bend wheel, your modulation wheel, uh, your LFO rate, your glide button, uh, your modulation mix here. You got all that there. And right up top, you've got your sounds. You got bass, classics, effects, keys, lead, pads, and percussion. All right. Right here, if you hit this button here, it looks like the share button or the download button, but it's actually, if you create a sound and you want to save it, that's what you hit. And and it'll actually add it up here. If it's a bass sound, it'll actually include it here where the basses are. And let's see, and that's actually the share button right there. So if you want to share some sounds with somebody or whatnot. Uh, you got an undo button, of course, redo, effects. All right, your effects are hidden until you hit the effects button. You've got your arpeggiator section, your bender, your delay and your looper it does have a looper and that kind of comes in handy uh if you want to just loop a certain little melody right quick an idea and it has ableton link built into it so you can utilize that as well to kind of you know play along with one of your other apps that that utilize ableton link um right here's your uh tempo you can change it to whatever you need it to be or you could tap it in or whatnot all right, you've got a basket here, and that's that basically takes you straight to the store to purchase new sounds. As you can see, there are four or five different sound packs right now, and I'm sure there will be more in the future. All right, right here in your settings, you got configuration. You got the uh, background audio, looper beat. Then you got the Ableton link disabled. That's where you would turn it on off. Uh, you got the key behavior. You got retriggering, legato, polyphonic. You got your LFO waveform, triangle and square, your contour shape, which is classic and clean. And you go next, you have your MIDI input and your output. All right, right here is where you have your pitch bend parameters. It'll go all the way up to 12 steps. Actually, I'm sorry, I just uh, downloaded the update and they changed it to uh, 48 semitones. They added 24 and 48. Previously, before today, it was uh, it only stopped at 12. All right got a panic button sometimes I mean I've had a few sounds getting hung on me and you just come here and hit the panic button also there's a Bluetooth MIDI like if you wanted to pair one of the uh, like the Akai boards that came out the Bluetooth Akai boards uh, that's where you would go for that all right and also like right up here where your MIDI input and output sections are like you see that network session that's actually uh, me connecting it with my Mac via the wireless network you can actually transfer MIDI to and fro through your wireless network. That's dope. Um, and also, I got the uh, MIDI host, which is basically, I guess, the uh, data cable here. All right. 
So I just got both of them highlighted, um, highlighted and got the Omni uh, selected here on the channel input then channel one. I've got like 16, yeah, 16 channels. So whatever channel you're on in your DAW, just uh, choose it here so they correspond together. Um, all right, the next thing in this section is the map CCs. Yeah, that's dope. All the parameters here are mappable to a MIDI device or your, your MIDI controller. Uh, see, I have a uh, an Akai Advanced 61. And what I did, I came down here to the user section. And let's see, we hit control. And those are my eight knobs there. And each one of them have a CC value, which, I mean, if you hit select right here, if you press in, you can actually change it to whatever you want it to be. All right. I don't know if you can see that. You see, those are the MIDI, uh, the CC values that I have right now. So I come over here and I change them here on whatever knob I want to control with those eight knobs. All I got to do is just press it, double tap on it. And... A window pops up and you can just type the MIDI CC number that you want to assign hit set and then you're good to go you can do that with the uh, with the uh, effects section as well I was trying to bring them down but I think you have to uh, actually let's see here okay I see I got you I got you yeah I should have had them open before I actually went to the set uh, the uh, setting session because you can actually uh, map the every knob in the effects section, section as well. All right, and as you can see, man, let me show you. I don't know if you can see that knob moving. See, but I'm doing that with the uh, knobs on my uh, advance. All right. So, all right, let's check out a few sounds right quick, man. And let me let y'all hear what this thing sounds like and why you should hurry up and spend your four ninety nine. I mean, like seriously, it's a no brainer. But let me let me let you hear something. And that's called the air bass. All right, and now I'm gonna try to adjust the sound. By doing a filter suite, uh, I'm gonna play with one hand, man. I'm not gonna really play anything because I'm trying to hold the phone and then play at the same time and twist the knob. So let's see how this works out. see man that, that filter sweep is dope I mean it sounds as close to a Moog as I've ever heard I mean I don't own one but I watched plenty of videos and it, it sounds dope man um I had actually planned on getting a sub 37 and I still might but this this app is gonna hold me for right now I promise you uh let's check out a few more uh let's see creeper bass let's try it and see what that sounds like see why they call it creeper bass self-explanatory all right let's see what else we got uh oh yeah final destination let's try that see what else we got here uh razor yeah yeah let's see that razor bass is pretty dope too you've heard it before i'm sure yeah 
velocity, man. I mean, like I say, pay attention to the pitch being wheel. See, I'm doing that with my keyboard. So, like I say, I've got that mapped, and uh, well, actually, that just maps up and syncs by itself. But as you can see, man, the sounds are stupid dope, man. Like, if you're looking for that Moog sound, which I don't know why you wouldn't, because it actually fits into any genre of music, you can use it. I mean, I've, they've got so many different sounds in there and so many different uh, textures as far as bass go, man. You can't, I mean, you can't go wrong with it. I mean, if you're into the iOS thing, which even if you're not, I mean, how else are you going to get this sound and for that amount of money? Four ninety nine is just, you know, it's, it's just a crazy price. And, of course, I mean, a lot of us out there looking for sub sounds like me. I use a lot of 808s and a lot of sub bass. So, of course, they got it. Then you can, you can actually, I forgot to tell you that you can, uh, adjust the keyboard so you can go up high or low yeah see i mean the uh, options are limitless man with this bass thing but like i say man uh get the app you can't go wrong because i'm sure the price is going to go up i don't know when uh hopefully it hadn't gone up by the time you check this video out but like I say, four ninety nine, man, this is a no brainer. And the fact that you can sync it up and use it in your DAW, and like I said, this is a uh, the MPC software that I'm using, man, and um, it's just crazy. You know, I recorded a couple of tracks earlier, and uh, I mean, it's, it's records right up. I mean, everything just syncs right up, and it records, and uh, you just tape it to audio, and you're done. You know, you got the Moog sound for four dollars and ninety nine cent, man. You can't beat it, Model D. All right. All right, let me show you real quick uh, me recording into the MPC software utilizing this this Moog app and uh, let you hear how that sound and let you see the playback and the fact that it will trigger the MIDI and trigger sound from the app. All right, yeah, let's check it out. I'm going to do a quick bass line real quick. Nothing spectacular, so don't judge me on what I play. <laughs> All right, here we go. See that man? I mean, it's simple now. All you got to do is take what you just played and arm a arm a, an audio track in the MPC software, man, and you know just set your input and record it into it, man. And I mean, you have the audio file of what you just played, and I mean, you can move on and continue with your track. And the next time you pull the beat up, you won't need the app and the iPad connected to your software. 